<clears throat> well, we could we could do the uselessness as being. Uh... We are live, people. Welcome to episode twenty nine of the weekly. And um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Um, are you seeing me twice, guys, or no? No. No. Okay. I'm right, cool. You twice, but um, you just only one only one has um. Video. Uh, only one video. Yeah. I apologize, guys. I'm having technical difficulties with my laptop. There is no audio with it. But um, I'm using my um, my Galaxy Note 8 <clears throat> front-facing camera to to boost up with those eight megapixels for you. But um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, of course, with me are uh, my usual host. Uh, standing off with is uh, Mr. Sam, aka Black Iron underscore Man. How's it going, man? Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Cool. And of course, the one and only Mr. Warren Bowman is back from his adventures in Dragonland. Yeah, what's going on? Let's do this. All right. And uh, Mr. Juan Bagnell is also here. He will be joining us. He's just getting his stuff uh, situated. I don't so know. Can you, guys, jump... can you guys hear me right now? Because I have yeah. an audio feed open. Just hopefully I'll be able to patch in some video here in just a minute. All right, cool. Cool. Um, Let's start off with the uh, the news of the week. Uh, looks like Google is looking to buy HTC Mobile Division. We had speculated this, um, I think it was like a week or two ago, if I'm not mistaken. And rumors have come up that um, you know uh, Google is looking to buy them. It's through DigiTimes and Commercial Times uh, through Chinese as a Chinese language site that Google might be looking to pick them up so they can bolster its phone division and you know have that fully internal so they don't have to go out and look for people to actually build phones for them. What do you think about this? We've also heard about, you know, we also had rumors about HTC spinning up Vive, doing different things. So I'll start off with you, Sam. What do you think about this news? Well, from a HTC standpoint, it makes sense, right? If you're going to sell off your mobile division, it makes sense to spin up Vive. So both those news together make sense. But the problem here is from the Google side. Google already tried this with Lenovo, oh, I'm sorry, with Motorola. Before it sold Motorola to uh, the mobile division of uh, Motorola to uh, Lenovo. Google already tried this and they gave up on it. So my question is why are they trying this again? It doesn't seem feasible from, you know, from my end. Like looking at Google saying they they want to become a phone manufacturer again when everything they're doing is kind of stepping away from being a phone manufacturer and more to the realm of, you know, that um, uh, third party slash manufacturer engagements. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's an interesting move if Google is truly going to make this purchase, but I'm not too hopeful for about it. Um, just a counterpoint. I think, I think it makes sense on the Google side too because with the Motorola um, purchase, remember the then CEO was the one who, remember they were one of the Google uh, founders, one of them just didn't want it. And the other half was like, yeah, we did. Now it's under different management um, with, um, what's his name again? The new CEO, Actually, the, in, the, the Indian guy. I just can't remember his name, yeah. But yeah, um, so I think it makes sense. And also HTC as a mobile wing, um, it's oh, smaller now. Sundar Pichar. So, so, yeah, HTC is smaller compared to what Motorola was at that time when they picked up Motorola. So for them to do what they want to keep doing, I think it makes sense. But um, Warren, what do you think? Um, it makes sense. It's probably, it's been something of a pairing that people have put together for quite a few years now. Um, at this point, I think HTC needs to look at um where where's the longevity for them and it doesn't seem like there is a long-term picture for them anymore in the in the uh, mobile industry as so many other competitors have come around so it would seem as though it's probably fitting to probably maybe um take the take the option to cash out now and head into you know into the google world and just um i mean i guess go f maybe i guess continue the legacy from there Mr. Juan Bagnell? Um, yeah, so I mean, this is a different situation. You guys can hear me okay? okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Juan, man, that camera shot is very, I mean, like... It's better, right? I'm. Uh, this is still like a a, a, a cluster of No, no, but what, I mean, what are you doing in the background, man? It's all nice and defocused and 
Drew. Okay, so, so if, you, if you guys want to know, I'm running a ridiculous setup right now where this is actually from my Panasonic. This is from the G85. I'm using an HDMI out um, into an, uh, what is this, an Aja UTAP. Um, it's like a $400 box just to convert that HDMI feed into a USB webcam-like uh, signal. And then no, that, I have two different go. audio decks just to keep everything running on Hangouts appropriately. This is, this is what it takes. <laughs> to like modestly improve your video quality on Hangouts. Well, it's, it's working, ridiculous. man. It's working. $1,500 minimum. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's the price tag. Exactly. And I still have to contend with like uh, Spectrum's like crap upload speeds. And so it's going to degrade everything down to 720p anyway. <laughs> It's hilarious. So um, HTC. So this is a different position than where we were with Motorola. And this is why I'm hoping that Google has learned some lessons from that. Because in that era, Google was really sensitive about pissing off manufacturing partners. Their own first party solutions were the Nexus. Those were developer focused phones that found some kind of consumer following, but very, very small. Since then, what have we seen? We've seen Google pivot to a more consumer direct focus with the Pixel. I mean, really, the Pixel isn't anything that much different than a Nexus with a couple different color options, but Google is trying to put their best foot forward in reaching out directly to potential customers. So an HTC acquisition now, where you gut the company, you unfortunately drop those HTC letters and you focus on that first party solution, makes a lot more sense. And I think if they execute that way, as opposed to trying to keep this weird division of Motorola's over here, but the Nexus is still made by LG and Huawei. This could make a lot more sense for both Google and the remnants of the HTC phone division. If this happens, I really hope that we see a fork between the Vive and the phone division. I think Google could do some cool stuff with the Vive incorporated into Daydream, uh, really start trying to get some stuff off the ground with Tango. But ultimately, VR is still so fresh. I want more competition in that space. But the HTC phone division, Gut it, make the Pixel. I'd love to see an HTC take on an Android One, a really cheap handset. I think that could be really compelling. And I think that would be both good for HTC employees and Google at large. But I think, isn't, isn't Google only going to get the mobile division? And HTC yeah, it's like no, the rumors are on the mobile. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I do agree with you. I, I, do want, um, I do want Vive to either be spun off um do its own thing i think vive has made its name uh that it can stay or maybe steam pick it up and you know continue that journey that they wanted to do anyway with it uh but for google i think picking up htc and focusing um and you know jumping into that mobile space and say look we want to be that third player because that's what they want they, they won't beat samsung and i know somebody mentioned that you know samsung should roll out tizen tizen is Tizen is done. Tizen is TV and smartwatch. Samsung already knows that, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, but okay, but let's look at it from this point of view, right? Right now, if you want to be that third player, we now have Samsung, we have LG, we have Essential, we have OnePlus, we have Don't, don't count Essential. Essential is not even, that's not even. No, 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 let's, let's count Essential because there is some buzz, even though it has some stumbling. Yeah. It does have a lot of buzz right They're, now. You're one of their three-year process to becoming relevant. Yeah. So mm -hmm. where does Google fit into this? And why does Google think it still fits into this whole landscape? Because the I Pixel it, did well your last year. That's the Pixel made by who? By Google. It didn't say HTC. It said by Google. Right. This is this is why I think it's there's good evidence. Did not say hey, there was that. no branding. Remember, that's why um Huawei didn't do it last year. Huawei wanted their name on there. Yeah. And Google said no. And this is why I think this is the right time for Google to buy up an underperforming phone division because those people want their jobs. And we know that this is an excellent manufacturing decision, division. No one has ever faulted HTC builds, right? No, no, no. That's the thing. They've always been a great, that's what we've always said. They've always been a great OEM. They just never learned how to, how to get <laughs> out of the OEM space. Um, but for, personally, for me, I think Google, I don't think they want to be in the business of making their own devices. I think they'd, they'd rather ship it or outsource it to someone else. It doesn't make sense at this time for Google to start purchasing a phone manufacturer again when all they really wanted from from from, um, uh, from Motorola was really the patents, and they already have that. So yeah, but that's it. Yeah, but, but Sam, Sam the, here's the thing, though. Sam, your, <laughs> Motorola then and what they did last year were, were two different shifts. They made a conscious shift last year 
to say we are entering into the phone market. When you spend that kind of money in advertising that they did and that concertive push, that clearly said we are coming in into the mobile market. And I think that was what last year really, and again, the change of the name too to Pixel, because if they really wanted to do the same thing, they will call it a Nexus. Let's call it what it is. They would have called it a Nexus and we'll call it a day. But they spent money to, to do a pivot. Although, and, to, Sam, to, to your point, because I, I mostly agree with you, Anabong, but Sam, to your point, this, I think this is another piece of evidence, though, that Google is not one thing and that we see a very confused direction on what projects and what initiatives are really going to be taking the forefront in their mobile strategy. I, I think this is a data point where we can kind of point to both of you guys being right, is that I think there is an entrenched position in Google where they want to have a first party hardware solution. And I think there are probably more people on the, on the software side saying, why? We, we put out products and our products are software, they're services. So what does it matter if we have a first party hardware solution in a time where premium phones have all kind of plateaued? It's not like you're really going to upset the Apple cart by making yet another nice premium phone around the $700 price point. So I, I think this is another opportunity where if Google picks this stuff up, that's great but they still need to demonstrate how they can move the mobile industry forward. I mean, this is, this is just reaching parity with a company like LG. It doesn't even get them to Samsung kind of awareness, but it would be a step in the right direction. Does Google really do? I think Google executives think that this is going to be a super profitable division. No, I really don't. Oh, Warren, any thoughts? No, um, I think it just makes sense to buy them up now because HTC can make more than just phones. They could also make um, they can also make um, <clears throat> tablets, and they can also probably make things like another Pixel C if they wanted to, and Chromebooks. It allows them to in-house all that to to be able to do it themselves. Um, against them. It seems like that's the direction they want to go, though, because if they if they didn't want to do that, they wouldn't have been so harped up on, on, um, you know, not allowing Huawei to have their name on the phone to begin with. So, I'm not sure quite on that whole thing, but it, I think it's still something that they should definitely buy. Yeah, I, I do agree with you on the fact that having in-house solutions for producing your hardware, um, and and you know, Google will always make something in terms of hardware at some point. Um, and HEC is a company that can, that can do that for you, whether it's a, a Pixel phone, whether it's Android TV, whatever you want to call it, whatever, you know how Google will come up with something every year for us, right? So uh, at least you now have that division that can do it for you in-house, and you know, they still have the software pedigree that they have. So bringing it in makes sense, and HEC will not be an expensive buy. Let's put it this way. HEC will be cheaper than the offer they gave to Snapchat. At thirty billion. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine that. that, that so, I mean, Snapchat has more users, right? So yeah, that's uh, kind of sad. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, next news story. This was from last week, but I wanted to touch up on it because you know Sam and I, Sam and I talked about this, but we didn't have the show. So uh, Microsoft gave up and decided to <laughs> to run a partnership with. Um, with Amazon, so that Alexa and Cortana can work together. Um, I mean, Sam, do you want to take take this man? Because I, I, I just it's 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 a weird decision by a company trying to push AI and then, um, you know, basically giving up or um, pairing itself with another bigger, well, more recognized AI solution that comes with a hardware um, gateway as well. So it's, it's, it's really crazy. Um, I think what Microsoft has done here is basically wrapped Cort um, Cortana within Alexa, because even to get to the Cortana por portion of things, you have to ask Alexa to start Cortana and then you use Cortana. So it's, 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 a, it's the kind of, I, I don't really get why they're making such a silly decision. They, they've stayed away from producing hardware that directly um, connect consumers to their AI solution. Now they've decided to wrap it into someone else's offering 
and the way it's being implemented does not seem as though it's advantageous advantageous in any way to um, to what Microsoft is uh, is trying to, what anyone is trying to do with AI. So it's it's really left to be seen if uh, Microsoft really does have a consumer focused AI play. Uh, Warren, what do you think? Um, doesn't really make a lot of sense it, to me that they would um, try to try to get Katana out there by going through Alexa and thinking people are going in Alexa can ask for a Katana because guess what? Those folks don't even know who the hell Katana is. Yeah. So this just baffles me that they would do this. This is, I think, a sign of them once again. They got into something. They don't know what they're going to do with it. They're trying to alleviate as much consumer facing things as they possibly can outside of windows and office and i think this is a play for them to eventually either dissolve that and probably focus more of their ai and um automation division towards probably more business related practices it's it's a dumb move period um juan please um actually uh, i mean actually... warren kind of perfectly summed up how i'm feeling about that it, it's We've seen so many of these companies trying to reinvent the wheel, but you know, Microsoft was ahead of the game. They were way ahead of the game with Connect. They were way ahead of the game with Cortana, really trying to champion that kind of user inter um, interactions. And I mean, maybe to Google's credit, you know, when we were talking about why does Google need a first party hardware solution when you don't have mobile devices out there, look yeah. what happened to Cortana right mm -hmm. the, the the value of cortana plummeted and you know how many people really leave it active on their laptops tablets i mean i'm never going to interact with cortana on a desktop it's just not the way i i want to interact with a, a, a desktop computer so the fact that they're trying to make this pivot they're making this transition why not just piggyback on what's still probably the most successful implementation of a consumer facing voice assistant and that's great, but it completely devalues. It's like, you know, when we were looking at Windows 10, and you're like, oh, well, we'll have this really great trans, uh, transition software so you can run Android apps. Well, then why wouldn't I just go get an Android phone? That was, that was one of the last nails in the coffin for Windows Phone. It's the same thing here. Why would I use Cortana as a piggyback service just to get to the Amazon Alexa service that I could use directly? Yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting. And I remember um, Sam and I were talking about this last week. Um, and we all know Microsoft loves to relaunch dev devices and software and things like that. You know, Windows Phone went through five launch periods <laughs> in yeah. its lifetime. Um, so. And, you know, Sam was like, look, okay, fine. We know Cortana is behind in terms of just awareness. You have a device coming out with the Xbox One X. You, all you need is actually a mic. Yeah. Just embed a mic in, in, the, in, in, in the hardware. Because you know, it's, you know, it's going to speak out through your speakers. But you have a mic embedded in there. You can now reintroduce it and then do another push. Because even though you're late, you're actually still not that far behind. Right. That's the funny thing. Remember how we, we talked about Amazon with the Fire Stick then? We said they were late. And how they came in and still fought their way back. Now Fire Stick is up there as one of the... Uh, streaming sticks that you can pick up. That's all Microsoft needs to do, and they have a. Or at least they <laughs> I mean, had... We can say we can say that's all Microsoft needs to do, but <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, really, what we <laughs> saw was Amazon willing to to lose in the market for yeah. about two generations of product while piggybacking on a service that consumers were already on board with. Amazon's streaming audio video solutions. Those things were already sort of well implemented on other devices, Roku no, no. and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, no, I agree. So. But, but think about it this way, right? Um, installing the mic on the Xbox and copying what Samsung has done with Big... You can control your phone with Bixby. Yeah. You literally can. Now, whether Bixby is still... Sometimes Bixby has the functionality, uh, the issues where it just pops up once in a while. That's software issues you can fix. But you literally, you can tell Bixby turn off my vibration without you going seven steps to do it. Right. You just have to that make sure what... that the default is not set to very low sensitivity. Seriously, my yeah, voice is I low know. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had that on my Xbox and I can, I can jump in and out of applications, change my settings via voice, why not? Because there's, no, there's no there's no connect there to do it regardless if you plug in a microphone or headset no 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 that's why that's why we're saying that you if you put in a mic 
the gamer in, in the Xbox One. Headset, the gamer that's going to put a headset on and play that way, it's never going to make Cortana commands. You can try to put a microphone on No, we're on saying there. not headphones. Yeah. Not, not headphones. Yeah, but no, no, rather, yeah. It, it doesn't matter even if it's plugged or not. It's matter as yeah. long as you an make embedded it work. Microphone system, kind of like a, a, an Alexa yeah, but, Dot or a Google Home. But, but the quality you would need would be something similar to what's on, on a Connect. So that would just boost up. No, no, no. The quality you need is the same thing you have on your Google Home. I can stand from my bedroom and say, oh, Google Home. Which is, which, is about the, which, is about, which is a little bit better than what's in the Connect. <laughs> and you can fit into the Xbox. You can. Yeah. It's if you can fit it into the um, uh, Alexa you dot, fit it into if you the fit into the dot, you could probably you can't fit, fit it into the cost. That's the, the microphone? The no. Dot is what, like 50 the bucks? Second 50. You, and how many gamers are going to complain when it's $50 more? It's not going to be fifty dollars. Oh, Google Warren, Google. come on! Adding mics it will not cost fifty dollars more. That that fifty dollars means there's a profit of thirty bucks yeah, on that device. That's what I'm saying. Still, the is fifty if bucks. That itself. thing goes oh, up I'm on its cost bucks, by just a few bucks. You know the <laughs> gamers will come out and complain. It's not it's the cost of game. No, no, it's not it's the cost of game. <laughs> Warren, you missed the point. I'm not saying that it's no, wrong. No, no, the point is what the wrong. point is what Juan is saying. Oh, yeah. the, it's no, not it's that. I'm not talking about that. It's the fact that what Juan is saying. I'm, Microsoft is not willing to take losses for it. It's not the fact that you transfer it to the gamer. No, you're not going to How do that. How many more else can they take? You have, no, I'm they've talking about the loss, the financial loss else of it. They've done L on OneDrive. They've L done. They've L done the Connect. They've L done the Xbox One. Xbox One being actual legitimate good launch. They L done. Uh, they L done that stupid gaming get that game streaming service that they made. They decided to L on OneDrive and piss everyone off with that. How many more losses can they sit there and take? To I the said point financial where like, loss, not theoretical L's. I'm talking about look. That's you still, put it in still, there. Well, actually, money. I would say right now for Microsoft, they're kind of one in the same. Every division, yeah. with the exception of the Xbox division, even the Surface is starting to lose its luster. And yep. I think in part, it's because Microsoft is not keeping the pressure on development yeah. cycles, refreshes, updates. Look at their response. Like, there was no they response. they put out a damn laptop. No they put out a laptop. Well, That's I mean. The, and, that told me they failed. I'm sorry. They when, told me the, they gave up the on whole the point Surface concept. The surface. <laughs> was that it was going to drive the industry. Their partners weren't getting the job done. Surface arrives. This is what we think Microsoft products should look like. And then they put out a laptop. I mean, that is not invoking Sorry. excitement. That is not that is not driving the industry. That is not moving the goalposts on where well, the we Surface going. Studio thing that I don't think I've seen anyone buy. And I mean, look at like the sort of the nerd cred, the nerd buzz that was over that thing. Like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And it's the iMac killer. And did Microsoft really drive it? Did Microsoft? Yeah, it's really a matter of driving. It? I mean, I think the Surface Studio was fine as a product. Yeah, it's just but, the driving. Yeah. That, but I then agree, I mean, like, I who the hell yeah. was talking about it after that initial buzz yeah. post, you know, keynote, you know, post conference? No one was talking about it. And that's on Microsoft. And the same thing happened with Windows Phone. The same thing has happened with pretty much every other hardware division at Microsoft, Bing. minus Bing. keyboards and mice. Like, Bing. yeah, another L. <laughs> no, but I mean, the look, I, the, L. yeah, but I, I hear you with the L. I'm just saying that, look, the company has to decide. And to Juan's point, the company is not deciding to go that route. And you were right, too, by saying they want to go business, right? And, you know, I, we've said this, and I've called for this, and I'll say, it, and, I, you know, Sam said this earlier, is like, CEO needs to go. I'm sorry, because he's driving the company away from being innovative, structured, and functional. As bad as Obama was on certain things, this is not one of the things he would have given up on. And to me, when you have a lot of divisions which were, doing, were beginning to build credibility in public mindset, and then you are now capping them in many ways. Cortana, even when Cortana first started, hello? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're all here. Here. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. That's something when I was my other... Yeah, yeah uh, your other device kind of died. <laughs> my device went up. Even though when Cortana was, you know, it was still, it's still not well known. A lot of people said, well, Cortana is better than Siri. Microsoft just needs to push it, right? You know, if you, if you have that cred within the community saying it's better than, you know, the big Apple thing, right? So all we need for you is to put it out there. And then what do you do? You go partner with Alexa. You don't. You mention a speaker. No, 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 how no, many you're months? Making it too easy. First, they did it was stages. They went through the stages of stupidity. First, they <laughs> kill their um, the connect deal. 
Then they L. killed their phone. Hold on, what, Sam, 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 slow down. I need to write down the L's. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> then they killed right, their then. phone division. Then yeah. they basically don't integrate it properly into In the their, Xbox. Uh, into into the into their Xbox and their Surface devices. In fact, they had basically they could easily have put it into the Surface in some innovative way, and they didn't even highlight that as a feature on the Surface. And then they decided, oh, we'll give it away. To Amazon. There's all the series of stupidity. That's all I can fit on this paper. That's all I can fit on this paper. There are more. That's all. <laughs> all the damn L's that they take. What what more can they freaking sit here and do and take? Especially when they, they hop into something. They're more half-assed than Google with shit. Like, seriously, like Google will do something half-assed and at least create a product that someone's, somebody's interested in. And people just get mad they don't develop it anymore. Them no, on the no, other no, hand, this, this oh, here's another L. Google, as soon as I saw Dex, Dex went up, here's another L. The whole Windows phone thing to being a desktop uh, operating system nonsense, yeah. too. And there's a go with another row. And then Windows 10 S. And then they extend how long you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro, which means everybody probably did and probably complained that they couldn't upgrade from a crappy operating system. That was half-assed. Jeez. Jeez. Wait, how did we get here well, dude, from this is not even a micro, uh, uh, to an Xbox One? <laughs> how did we get here? Right? This is not even a Google thing. Google will basically put everything out there. They'll throw it they out just, there. They'll, they'll just throw it out there. Microsoft kills stuff without it even maturing. That's the problem. I think it's a it's a Satana Della problem, right? He's been good for Microsoft's um, board members. On the short term, that's fine. In the long term, when you have no hardware footprint in the home, like right now, if I look around for a Microsoft product in this apartment, the only thing I can think of is one, I have an operating system. That's the only thing. And then, oh yes, I have a Surface and that's it. And my Surface is getting less and less used because I'm using my note more to take notes. Like my my note devices from Samsung to take notes, so it's like where is the you know the hardware in the home? Oh, Xbox, sorry, gaming, but where's the hardware in the home where I can go? Like Google, I use that every single day. Google Home, I use that every single day. Amazon, I use every day on my phone. Every time I'm buying stuff, it's automatic Amazon. What is automatic Microsoft from a hardware perspective? Oh. What is automatic Microsoft that people go to? My mouse. Ah, good point. <laughs> I've got a killer Bluetooth mouse, and I love it. And I've never. I just got to open up Outlook every day if you work in corporate America. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's not hardware. You just talked exactly what Nadella is programming you to do. Is like that's another software, software service that they're trying to push server side. Again, devaluing. Like we can make Office just like Google Docs. And you're like, well, then why wouldn't I just use Google Docs? I mean, if yeah. if that's the standard for web uh, collaboration, if that's what you're trying to emulate, then why? Why they're really, they're, they are really lucky that software, uh, financial software like Bloomberg and Facts and those that run like financial data, they're basically oversimplifying but giant RSS readers for financial data to come in, doesn't have plugins that work with Google. Yeah. Because if they did, oh boy. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, oh, I have to believe boy. that that's around the corner. I mean, oh, relatively boy. speaking, for the financial market, you know that that could be and, years and, and of how, but and and how natural we Google Docs likes to like if you're a little bit advanced on one of the develops, how easy it is to develop some code to make something work within the Google Docs ecosystem to 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 get more Agreed. things done. Uh, they they uh, Nadella needs to go before it's too late. Uh, I, he really yeah, short term is good, but long term with this dearth of with with, with this lack of hardware uh, footprint, it's going. To, he's Microsoft is going to take a huge hit on this. Well, and and a part of this is also just like the the transition. Like I could have respected if they just never walked into these hardware spaces. Yeah, what to stay out of it. Humor is when you dip your toe in and then you pull back out. It looks like you don't have a stable model. It looks like you're inconsistent in the market. And that's going to, I mean, it's not a direct effect, but it has a general perception over all of your products when consumers don't trust you. Trust you. Uh, yeah, there's one more L, one more major one. What, the band two? To me, that's a major one. That's yeah, a major look one. Look your wrist. <laughs> and it doesn't have a Microsoft band anymore, even though that, shit, that stuff was really good. Microsoft should have put a you. microphone in there and go. You hey, know Cortana. what, Sam? No, okay. Sam, <laughs> I won't call. I won't call the band two and L. I'll call them leaving everyone high and dry by not yeah. making any more <laughs> bands the actual L. Oh, yeah. That's their L. Is that they made a good product and decided to give up on it. I yeah. yeah. That I don't, I don't get it. They just 
And they were the and only at, ones doing so much more. How did we get here from speaking about a speaker? How did we get here from talking about put, putting microphones inside of an Xbox? This, it's because this, this, it's, this it's Microsoft. It's, it's Microsoft. Microsoft. Here's, Microsoft here's, another, here's another great thing about that. No one, I, I don't even think the consumers out there relate Microsoft to Xbox anymore. I think they. I think when they look at Xbox, they think Xbox is its own damn thing. They think it's something that they kind of know it's made by Microsoft, but they don't ask questions. It's like, oh, it's around there. It's just, it's it's what goes against PlayStation, and that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. I, 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 matter of fact, find your box for your Xbox. Does it even say Microsoft anywhere on it in the front prominently? <laughs> And I guarantee you that's the Xbox division doing that. They're pulling the Call of Duty <laughs> um, uh, Modern Warfare trick. Wow. They're pulling that. <laughs> the Infinity War is pulling that. Let's just make that Call of Duty name Modern Warfare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. They're almost uh, making right. the play there to get no away Microsoft from Microsoft logo. Them. They're making game. the play to get away from them. Yeah, it it is it is now, that is sad. That is sad. I mean, oh, there's one on the corner, all the way in the bottom. <laughs> nah. there, there is a Microsoft. Um, there's just Microsoft. Okay, good. I mean, you don't even yeah, see it in the menus of the operating system inside the Xbox. <laughs> you don't even see it. It's, it's, it's sad. yeah. It, it's it's very it's a very interesting time. Of, I mean, you're right. I think the pro, what Microsoft is going to face is that if they're if they don't change this very quickly, as in start making those changes they're going to have to spend a lot of that money that they have saved up they're lucky Google to either does, try, they're try, sorry. try and get back into any of these markets. But the one market that they have to get back into is AI. I mean, yeah. now that yeah. it doesn't matter what they do with that's, this that, partnership. That's do or die. That's really do they, or die. They have to get back into it, especially on the consumer side. So you can think business all you want. But remember, Apple has taught us one thing about business users. Apple was the first company to get that iPhone, take that consumer device, that exec said, I want my iPhone run with our office, whatever rubbish that we have. Just make it, right. make it happen. You know, once that happened, it said there was no more division between business user and consumer. Your device right. must be able to, which is why Samsung's themselves, right? They bought Knox to incorporate it, to say, look, we will give you that sexy Samsung phone that you love and it will work with your business software and you can separate it and you can bring it together. Now, do you think, do you think there's room for Microsoft to actually execute an end run around AI? Because I don't think they're giving up on AI and we know they still have a bunch of divisions that are sort of working on pet projects like bots in Skype, things like that. Is there oh, room for them to oh, approach oh, this oh, from I multiple angles to then kind of come back that. and actually reach something consumer facing? You see, I mean, the, the, I, I think there is, but the, the company structure doesn't tell us that, right? Right. You know, so even though those oh, no, guys they went through are that working, big restructuring and they were going to work closer together with all the different divisions. Remember, that was like five years. ago. No, no. See, I don't I don't disagree with that aspect. I think <laughs> they actually are talking better with each other. I think the the hierarchy structure of saying, let's say, what's his name? Um, uh, our buddy at uh, Surface, right? Um, mm. If he wanted to do something, he can start it off, but if it's not what they've decided that Surface should do, doesn't yeah, matter. That's true. Just, just kill it. Oh. So I, I think that's, that's the problem there is that they are probably talking and there's better communication and they're going, dudes, this is awesome. Let's do this. We'll incorporate that. And it's, no, we're not doing AI anymore like that. Okay, never mind. You know, forget it. You know, we, we saw that announcement of that really cool thermostat. Really cool thermostat. I mean, it looked funky as hell. I'm, it, none of us ever going to see it. Because nope. Microsoft hates its own hardware. Satana Della does not understand how hardware, from a consumer standpoint, that hardware is the place where you get adoption. He's looking at it from a corporate standpoint, from an enterprise standpoint, and hardware is just overhead. No one buys hardware, they rent hardware. So just go for the software and just get the, um, what's it called, get the installation I mean, I mean, uh, it, keys or whatever. Yeah, go, going back to Google, right? It now, it, you, you think about it that way, it makes sense for HTC. You extend the hardware from Google Home to phone, you keep adding onto that portfolio that people go, I am fully Google. There's a reason why Samsung made Bigsby, because Samsung has TV, refrigerator, they have vacuum, they have speakers. Come on. 
you got to run your own. Yeah, but I think yeah. you're arguing the reverse. No, no, no. I'm just saying that. You're arguing the reverse. No, no. I'm not saying that you need a hardware. device that sits in your home. They already yeah. have that presence. You can go and get a device that sits in your home and you use 80% of the time for whatever um, automated interaction. Samsung no, no, didn't no, have that. That's no, why no. they had to go with um, Bixby on a phone. So you can have something that's on you, an AI. I, yeah, I, but the, the Bixby is their own version of having an OS without actually yeah, having an having OS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I'm just saying, what I'm saying is this is OS, that the, the, the common denominator there is that there is hardware. These people yeah, are getting right. more hardware yeah. out, not less. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, you know, well, and Microsoft is doing less. You know, two, two, Google two. came from zero hardware to two. Oh, and it'd be multiple different hardware. You multiple different. But you can still use yeah. home on any of your Android phones. So that they don't stop you from doing. Yeah, that. no, they, they don't. But I'm just saying that they continue to do that, and you know, it's that push where you're going to get more hard. Look at Amazon. Amazon has an Amazon branded TV for crying out loud that works with Alexa. Oh. Yes. So, yes. Uh, yeah. So, what, 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 Amazon so, has a TV. Yeah. Was it like five ninety nine? I mean, and I'm talking about five dollars ninety nine cents. No, the it's like it's TV like it's like no, it's free with ads. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I heard you like commercials, so I put commercials on your commercials. Commercials. <laughs> it's it's four hundred dollars for TV for like a fifty-five inch or something like that. You know. Well, but to so it, to, yeah. to add a couple of things so we can wrap up with the Microsoft thing. Yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> Microsoft. Maybe 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 Microsoft's communicating a whole lot better because now they use Teams instead of Skype, meaning that if you use Skype for business in any way, shape, or form, one, I feel sorry for you because it sucks, and two, you'll be getting something better, which is Microsoft Teams, which is this Slack ripoff. So maybe that's why they're communicating a little bit better. And secondly, anybody noticed that? Google changed Google Drive to now to be, what is it, Google Backup and, and whatever it's called now? Oh, and what does that do? Them. And what does that do? Does, does that make full backups of your documents and stuff to the cloud and your computer hmm. and stuff and puts it into there? Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm, I wonder who got mad when their, their loyal, loyal, loyal fan base was doing that and just put the kibosh on it and who got all yeah. pissy. Oh yeah, and then they cut the, the the amount of space you could get. Yeah, exactly. One drive. <laughs> and they wonder. One drive. I would not yeah. be surprised. We see a lot of people with that backup and sync that automatically syncs all into Google's rich applications of Word, PowerPoint, see, Excel, see, see, see here, here, here's something uh, that I now, that you just mentioned that now brought, brings me back. Right, we saw Qualcomm's 835 demo on Windows. You have a chipset that has LTE. You would think you pair that up, of course, with OneDrive backup and all that kind of easy cloud function. And now that your PC is always connected, but because you've reduced people's storage limits, I'm not going to use OneDrive. I'll use Google Backup. I'm just simple. Like it's it's that kind of which I think is short term as of this year. Yeah, it's short term to to not looking at the long term benefits of where your roadmaps go to. I mean. Having a, you know, a, a, and you look at it, if, you, if 835 on Windows works the way, the way they want it to work, you're having something light, super portable, always on LTE, I think it would be great. But, hey, you know what? It's just me. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Uh, Microsoft has uh, <laughs> an event coming in October for the Surface. That's, that's the word. Um, it looks like we're getting the next version of the Surface book. Um, any thoughts or anything you want to see in there, in, in that device? Let's say, not thoughts, but what do you, would you like to see in the next Surface Book? Juan. I, for me, it's, it's Refinements, the name of the game. Um, I almost went with the Surface Book uh, and ultimately decided on um, my Razer instead. I mean, we were really comparing similar price points. I wanted a little bit more horsepower. I wanted a slightly better GPU. And then other things too. It was nice. Like I was able to find a laptop with, uh, it's technically a 3K display and a touch screen. And I mean, that, that really sort of appealed to me. I, there wasn't a lot wrong with the Surface Book, in my opinion. It's just Microsoft needs to show that they can iterate. And I think this is also why it's so crucial to be on the ground talking to your consumers is for them to show off what the versatility of that device brings to numerous different disciplines. Their ad campaign was on point. It was very quiet. It was very subtle. I hope they continue those types of traditional marketing um, outreach uh, spots. But they also, I think they need to do a better job of really trying to leverage um, hands-on experience. 
know, when I go walk by a Microsoft store and there's a, an Xbox display right out front and then partner manufacturer products. And I have to kind of dig into the store a little bit to see what it is that Microsoft can do that's special. That's a, a wasted opportunity. That's a missed opportunity. And that's really where I feel a lot of companies misstep, Microsoft included. So really, it's just I hope we get that updated GPU. I hope we get an option for a more powerful Surface Book. I mean, uh, I don't think they ever did any of the, the mobile quad core um, Intel chipsets, right? It was only the the U edition dual core. No, no, no. The, the 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 edition one had uh, mobile quad core. It just no, they just... did. I I would yeah. like to see that again. Education. I'm in this space. I buy these products. I care about this stuff, and I have a hard time keeping track of where Microsoft is with some of their positioning. So it's that kind of stuff. I hope they can get more aggressive in sharing and reaching out to their consumers. But really, I, I don't see where the Surface Book needs a lot of work. We're, I think we're in <laughs> Surface Pro 3 to Surface Pro 4 kind of refinement. Right? Right. That's, that's what I hope to see is just little touches, address some of the basic concerns, get after drivers, especially pen touch drivers, um, Windows 10 drivers. There are still issues with Surface products for stuff like that. And I think you've got a winning product. Ooh, they're just going to put out another... Uh... They're, they're finally going to put out that mini surface with Windows 10S. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a Surface Book announcement? Well, allegedly. Yeah, it looks like a Surface because they just did the, the new Surface Pro, so it's it's a Surface Book now, so it's what people are, are looking at. Um, Interesting. I didn't even think they were going, they were going to refresh the, the Surface Book. I thought, I thought the laptop they released was just going to be that. No. Um, I, I, I think, personally, I mean, you're right, Juan. Um, especially with NVIDIA's GPUs, or maybe if they go with AMD, because I, I heard AMD's GPUs are ready to roll in terms of um, mobile GPUs. Uh, you're looking at a Vega in there with um, a Ryzen 5 and a Ryzen 7 in terms of like GPU, uh, CPU and GPU mixes. So if they can give me, say, um, a Surface Book starting with the equivalent of a GTX 1050 Ti all the way up to GTX 1080, because now you can put a 1080 in in um in the laptop because didn't the, the original surface book it never even had the designation for what gpu was in there it was just an it was a, yeah it was a gtx um uh was like a 960, nine right yeah huh? 950 960. 960 somewhere in it was there. a 960 yeah so but but it, tell us that you know don't say yeah. discrete graphics <laughs> no. <laughs> no like we, if you're talking about a surface book and this is what kills me when someone calls something a pro like you can't have a pro game console like a playstation 4 pro makes no sense that name, professional, doesn't apply to the product you're affixing it to. It's the marketing. But, oh, but I thought only only professionals are buying it, though, right? Right. It's a great yeah. <laughs> but if you're talking about something like a Surface Book, that is a premium price tier, premium product, high end deliverable. You should just disclose what's in it. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, it's fun. It'd be interesting to see what they do because this year you have um, two gaming laptops that are really slick and thin come with GTX 1080s, which will be around the same price as a Surface Surface Book with maybe a 1080 or maybe not, who knows. It'll be 